Roll. It's rolling. Okay, executive board meeting, January 27th. Uh, please review the minutes of the meeting, prior meeting. Joanne, would you make roll call, please? To make sure we have a quorum. Yeah. Oh, there you are, sir. Yeah. Uh, Diane is here. Uh, Michael Bunk is he's not here. Uh, Carol Burns is not here. Susie Burns not here. Uh, Marilyn Curtis is here. Uh, Maureen is here. here. Ruth is here. here. Uh, George not here. Dan Gladstone, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, Richard Handelsman is not here. Jackie, you're here. Uh, Bobby Levin is here. Uh, Michael Rayburn is here. Uh, Joyce is here. Flora is not here. Jeffrey? Yes. Uh, Jerry Sitovsky here. here. Uh, Mary Walsh is here, yeah, do you see? Um, and Olga is here, so one, seven, yeah, 12, 12, are here. 12 members are here, here's a quorum. Yeah, another person, another person, another person, another Are there any corrections to the minutes? If there's no corrections, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented. I make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Second. I'll second. Terrific. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? You're opposed? Oh, you're opposed? Oh, okay. All right. Um, President's report, okay. David is continued, continuing to get better. Some of us have seen him uh, attending some of the minutes via Zoom. Um, he's staying in touch with uh, several of the officers and Donald. He knows just about 95% of everything that's going on in the, visit, visit, in, in the village and is 100% involved in everything that we're doing. Um, I'm going to skip around a little bit. Um, how about a cam report? Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Uh, got a project starting to on Monday. Is the mic, mic, please? Okay. Uh, can everyone hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we got a project starting on Monday morning. A new curb is going to be installed along the north side of uh, Century Boulevard between Harbor Hill Road and East Drive. Um, I expect that portions of the right lane on Century Boulevard will be closed, uh, so there'll be some traffic issues. We have, we'll, we'll have security uh, doing traffic control, but I don't think the entrance will need to be closed at any point. Um, just so you guys are aware, uh, so it's a fairly big project. It'll take most of next week. Uh, that's kind of all I have for right now, so uh, if you guys have any questions for me, uh, have an answer. Yes, Jerry, hi. As I read your weekly report religiously, thank you. We're okay, and it's excellent. Uh, Lee Arbor, what's going on with them as far as the drainage and yeah, your report on that? Then I have another question after that. Sure. Um, just so everyone knows, um, Dr. Horton has passed on the land development phase of of this Reflection Bay property to a company called Coulter Group. Um, specifically, the division is Coulter Land. Uh, Representatives from this company and their engineers were here at UGO to see us a uh, week before last. Um, they reported that they want to um, start work on the project in late 2023. They presented us with their um, current drainage plan, which is somewhat different than the original plan that was, uh, that was uh, approved by the, the county commission. 
I understand that the amount of units that were originally planned have been reduced from 707 to 721 and the area of drainage has been increased. Um, some of this is to uh, deal with our concerns about, about drainage. There is one point in the plan where their drainage system it uh, comes together with our drainage system. And that's near the weir, um, over by the Seacrest compound on, on Fairway Street. Uh, what they're asking from Yuko is a uh, drainage easement. No. Um, uh, what, where we're at now is their engineers are going to be, and their lawyer, uh, Henry Handler, is going to be uh, working with our lawyer, Ron Tennyson, and our engineers, Simmons and White, to ensure that whatever the plan is, the uh, impact on Yuko, uh, both Century Village, is minimized. Um, there's also some financial considerations that are being worked out right now, and as we get more information on that, we're gonna, we're gonna let you guys know about it. Um, so basically, it's, it's sitting with lawyers and engineers right now, and we'll let, uh, yeah, hi, hi, over. go. Are we obligated to give them our part of the drainage? In other words, what if we don't want to give them anything? Well, Can we do that? That's a good question, Olga, and I don't have an answer to that. That seems like a legal question to me. Um, I, say, I think at some point, Rod will uh, be able to answer that, whether we can simply say no. Um, I do know that the, the developer has a plan B that involves going a different direction, good. Um, at, except through you go. But that, 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 that point of contact still exists. So uh, I think it's early days yet to, 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 to say whether um, we could just say no. My concern is that Yuko may give them permission without the delegates' approval. Absolutely and not. This is a big concern. No, no, no agreement of, of, of this significance would, would ever be signed without okay. the board of directors who, who we all work for, okay. including you. Yeah, there's some other, there's some other, uh, uh, Fausto just mentioned that there's some grading changes um, that's more favorable to us, I think. Um, but like I said, it's it's very early stages. They seem to be um, eager to get the job started. So we, we've got the smart people working on it now. And uh, as soon as there's some reports, we'll get it sent it out. Jerry, you said you had a question. Yeah. Uh, you also took a picture of a bridge that's near Anshay Shalom. Yeah. What's is that going to be repaired? Is that going to be permanently closed? What's happening? And, and I know it's a danger to people, but right. I've already gotten comments that I'll talk to you about later about. It. You, you being our, our, our ambassador to the uh, yeah. to the community, yeah. I got you. Okay. Um, listen, um, that that bridge is it, it's some. I hate to use a cliche, but it's complicated. Um, for one thing, the bridge itself sits on property that technically belongs to a company called Century Utilities, an old Mr. Levy company, which no longer exists. Um, secondly, um, excuse me a minute. Um, the, the, there is some question over whether Yuko or WPRF or Benson even owns that property. It may turn out that it, it's a county uh, property, and Dan Cruz is working on that right now. Um, he explained this to us at the operations meeting. Uh, the third thing is, uh, this this bridge cannot be repaired. It is beyond repair. Essentially what that bridge is, it's not even a bridge, it's a causeway. What it is is a, a, a round pipe that I could almost stand in, um, covered with sandbags and soil, and then on top of that are pavers. Uh, the problem is, is that the top of that pipe is completely rotted out. And the pavers and the soil were dropping into the into the pipe. That's why I closed it in 2018. Um, there is no universe where that 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 actual bridge is restored. Um, what I'm hearing right now is uh, Dan's favoring removing it altogether um, and and just just ending it. Um, for the immediate future, I made it as impenetrable as possible. I don't want it. I got some fellows over there that. Um, think they know what they're doing, and they cut the locks, they removed fencing. Uh, when I put it all back, they did it again. So um, 
I just had my Jose out there yesterday putting up uh, wood barriers and we're gonna make, we're gonna make it impenetrable because I'm petrified someone's gonna get hurt there just out of stubbornness. They even put lighting up. Um, so uh, I also know that Eva is in, in communication with a Rabbi Shea um, who, who called me and, and they're gonna sit and talk. But for now, I don't want anybody on that bridge. It, some, it, 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 it ends with somebody getting hurt. So that's it. Any other questions, guys, before we go on? Hi, Flora. Uh, um, I was Use the mic. Use the mic, please. Oh, my God. <coughs> we are one here. Uh, Good morning, Flora. Good morning. Uh, Wednesday. I'm, I'm one of the rover that we're going around. You're a COP? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey. Good. Good job. Well, that's not what I'm gonna say. This is what I'm gonna say. I was out doing doing the rover, and yeah. I was watching them. These guys over there, you know, doing something with the bridge and thing, and they was wearing uniform. They was. That's my guys. Those okay. Those were your. Yeah. Guys. Oh, okay. Because I. The guys that are doing the cutting wear a different kind of uniform, but oh, uh, but okay. but the no, those are my guys <laughs> putting the fences back up. Um, I, I've got a fence project about to be done over at Century Boulevard. I'm gonna save some of that old fence. And I'm going to use that to make it even more harder to get in. But if you if you're on the job and you see somebody going in there, and don't look like Brad, I took pictures. I was going to show it to, but you said they was your guys. So yeah, you, if you see it again, you, you call me. Okay. All right. I got. By the way, I've got cameras on both sides now. Yeah, I so. saw the cameras. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And good and good job getting on COP. Thank you. Any? Hi, Bob. Good morning. Uh, as far as that. that so-called bridge goes, shouldn't a sign be put up that states anyone going, anyone trespassing does so at their own risk? Well, listen, uh, Bob, one thing, anybody who would cut a lock that doesn't belong to them and step on property that don't belong to them after they've been told isn't going to listen to a sign. Secondly, it's not my property to, to, to threaten. Um, right. I, it, 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 Eva could put her green signs up with her EAN number on it, and it would have force of law, but um, that's kind of not my property to say that no well, one's I mean, on. If they if they sue, if they get in there and they cross it and they hurt and get their, give themselves hurt and turn around and sue, first of all, who, they don't know who they're going to sue. They're going to they're going to yeah, turn around and sue. They but, will name you go in it. No, don't, right. And and I think I've done a pretty good job documenting. That, these, that nobody has any business on that bridge. My report goes out to thousands of, of units. It's up on the internet. Um, I did that for a reason. That's my way of saying, step on it, something happens. This is, you should, you were told. Um, I also have uh, documented communication between the board of the, of the synagogue. Um, we're, we're covered in that regard. Thanks, Bob. I, I, I just think that, you know, they, they do and they don't. But if, if the sign's up, it'll, it'll legally. Yeah, but we don't know. We don't know what we don't know what the signs we should legally. Be best, we're not lawyers, but but uh, right now both both ends of that kind of that bridge look like the entrance to East Germany. So um, I, I think the, I think the message is pretty clear. Yeah. Grazie. Okay, turning it back to Fausto. Wait, one quick question. Where is that bridge? Why, you want to go on it? Yeah, no, I saw your pictures. I don't think so. Is it it's, in, it's in the Sheffield Love? section on, on Falkirk Street. Near Armchair Love up there? Yeah. Oh, okay. It connects Armchair with, with, with Sheffield. Oh, no. Okay. okay. And you never should see it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Stuart, how about an officer's report? Uh, <clears throat> those phone. people who had. Microphone. Yeah. Yeah. At the uh, operations meeting, we were given a report on <clears throat> the number of sales of units in Century Village, and it dropped considerably. I mean, there are a lot of reasons for it, perhaps the uh, dramatic rise in price or the number of units that uh, were taken off the market. So that's one consideration. The other is, as I was driving past the, past the medical building, there are a whole bunch of flags and advertisements for a real estate office being opened in the uh, that building. 
And I, I thought it was curious because of the fact that the sales, there is, if you drive past it going towards the, um, that's been there for a while. Oh, yeah. No, not always. Not always. That's, that's a, a resident who is a lawyer who decided to go into real estate and she opened up here last It was just, it just seemed inconsistent with the fact that the data that we were given with the number of sales for units here in Century Village dropped dramatically and now there's a bunch of signs for real estate. It just doesn't seem consistent with the evidence of what's going on. In any event, so that's just an observation. Do with it what you want. Uh, another thing is that the company that is building the project, which we talked about a moment ago, said to us that they were going to build a six-foot brick wall on the, their property, uh, and that would be the separation between Gulf's Edge, the wall, and their property. Uh, I don't know how the people in Gulf's Edge would uh, like that. We had mentioned, well, an eight-foot wall would be better in case their kids on the other side and climb over. But if you recall, the original project was a chain link fence that was going to be uh, dramatically uh, developed so that it would be very pleasing to the eyes of the people on both sides and that dropped out. It's not there anymore. So um, I would imagine it's easier for the company that is doing the work to put a wall up and uh, and that's it. And if you don't like it, it's too bad for you that you sit in your lower apartment in Gulf Sedge and you see a wall unless you want to play handball. So I'm not quite sure, but that that's that's it. That's what I that's my report. Observation. Dominic. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little further. Fausto has more than more than one time insisted on a masonry wall separating the two entities. And I believe it, masonry can either be uh, blocks that are uh, concrete block or poured, poured uh, concrete. Anyway, the difference in elevation is they, they're going to be three feet above our elevation. So our land is going to be below their, their uh, their elevation and a six foot wall for them is nine feet for us. Is nine feet for us. So the separation is going to be fairly decent. Hopefully, it'll, it'll be artfully presented. That's it. Yes. Maybe okay. we could get Bob to paint some beautiful murals on our site so that it's <laughs> nice to look at. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Joanne. <coughs> Good morning. The, uh, the only project that I'm recently involved in is um, we're going to be upgrading the call-in system uh, integrity, if you will. We know it goes down m way more often than it should. So we're, we're going through the motions right now to upgrade um, our ability to keep that system functioning at maximum capacity so that you know you're, when people are calling in they can get authorization or, or when you're calling I should say when you're calling someone in say a pharmacy delivery or etc um, so that's I've been working on it, upgrading that system which includes the office phone system um, and that's about it Take credit. You've been working on the Zoom meetings and well, uh, keep, <laughs> keeping the people. I'm trying. Uh, we're we're getting David because he's he wants to participate more. We were in fact just talking maybe next month if we can figure out how to use that screen up there. Maybe we can get him to participate. So we're you know we're integrating David electronically into everything. So that's a good thing. And um, we also have upgraded the security system. So we've got some additional surveillance going on from. PBSO. It, instead of having our security people just sitting there with their eyes glued to a monitor looking at footage, we have a system that automatically uh, is able to uh, pinpoint where 
uh, license plates are at any given time if they've come in or out of the village. So, and we've seen a lot of activity on that. So we're we're safer today than we were a couple months ago. Sorry. That's it. Work. Good. Don't Can I add one thing? And, and close to as we're well all aware of it, um, we put a, a message on on the. Um, What is it? The the blog. Blog. Oh, I'm sorry, the blog. The blog. I'm hot here and hot there. Um, that we will not have barcodes for, for the near future, hopefully as, as fast as possible. But we had ordered them, we were invoiced, we were billed, but we didn't get a product. So it's going to be difficult for people who want to renew or, or purchase for the first time a barcode to come through the Again, quickly. So so beware of that. You yeah. can renew. You can't get a new one, but you can renew. That's, That's correct. Right. Yes. Uh, just, uh, Dom, just to add to that, uh, I, I got confirmation from the manufacturer that the new shipment of barcodes was shipped out yesterday. So um, I expect them today, tomorrow, or Monday. As soon as we get them, we'll put out a notice and we can start giving up barcodes again. Yes. I just want to thank the officers for the emphasis that has been placed over this last year, at the very least, on structure and uh, kind of led by uh, LCAM's reports on what happens when people just rip out a wall or do what they care to do. That's why I look like this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's changed things, and it was a top-down issue, and you guys did it. And now it's it's spoken about. Uh, yeah, listen. Um, you just reminded me of something. Um, in March, uh, Mark Friedman is going to give a class specifically on this. Um, you know what to do when one of your unit owners goes berserk and starts knocking down walls, and, and what your options are. All right. Um, everybody should go to that class because it's affecting everyone, including me today, in my building. Thanks. Wow. Bob, you're up. Um, they've given me a, a, a task of working on the bylaws uh, and try and get them on, online. Um, I'm having difficulties because I'm David being, being out, so he has to show me certain things. Um, so I'm going to request that anyone from Windsor or Wellington Please turn in your bylaws to me, all right? And anyone that had any bylaw changes in the last 10 years. Wow. All right. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to, to, to just do a whole new uh, place to, for, for the bylaws to be put because, like I said, I can't get online and put them down on, on the uh, blog because so, I don't have access to it. Yes, Jackie. I don't just want bylaws, you want amendments to bylaws. I want the bylaws and I want the amendments. I want the whole sh whole Is that, meal. Is this something new? No, no. Oh, this is something know. someone was doing this prior. Ken Davis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he passed away, didn't finish. So Wellington and Windsor were completely left off of it. Alright, um, and I'm trying to get, get everything done on that. Um, and it would help me greatly if they just turn in the things and I can just scan it and we'll put them on a different different uh, blog or whatever. Because uh, <coughs> so I'm, I'm having difficulties trying to get it onto the blog and and until I get access to it, it it's not going to get done. Yes, please. Who would that be available to? Like real estate agents call? Whoever. Any right. who calls on the blog. Any, um, right. They, the, on the side of the blog, there's this, you could go there and check your documents, but they have not been updated in at least five or six years. And the gentleman that did it passed away. So it makes it a lot easier if we had, if they were updated, plus a lot of people have updated their bylaws that were already in the system. And you know how many people say, where are the bylaws? I need a copy. We want to be able to do that to make it easier. And Joyce, your question about agents, 
the uh, those documents are public record anyway. Oh, okay. So just by putting it on the blog, it just eliminates some steps for yeah. anybody who wants. Okay, to. thank you. Okay. Uh, just we, one more thing on that. All right. It, this this job was given to me about six months ago. All right, and as soon as I like, I'm still waiting on getting access to the blog. And once I get that, it'll start get filtering in. Um, we have no treasurer's report. I'm sorry, our treasurer is not here. Uh, do we have any old business? Do we have any new business? No, so I don't yes, Joe. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I don't know if this falls on the new business, but I watched your um, offices meeting yesterday. And could you just um, tell us more about what's happening with Breeze Line? Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, they, uh, uh, they've approached us uh, the last year. They're pushing, we, we've, uh, David has discussed this, where they're pushing where uh, they want the entire village to have internet through them. They're trying to, right now they have 61, according to them, 61% of, of the village has internet through Breeze Line. About 24 to 25% is to two other vendors. And it leaves about 15% that have no internet whatsoever. What they want to do is they want to eliminate the uh, recovery fee and everything and make it part of your regular month, monthly maintenance. So if you had the TiVo box and internet, that bill would go away. The only thing that you would be paying for if, if you had a telephone. But I believe it's an increase of $21, $22. Yeah. They, like we're at 37, they're at 51, 52 plus tax. And uh, we've told them no. David has told them no. Um, we asked Leo to come to the officers meeting to discuss this with him because when we had the Breeze Line meeting a couple of weeks ago, um, we explained, he was bringing it up and, and we're trying to tell him to take it off the table. That it's for now. For now, okay? And he keeps, he actually brought someone from, from Breeze Line to a meeting that he was responsible to come by himself. And that gentleman was asked to leave. Okay, that, that was yesterday. But uh, it has come in front of the delegate assembly and before any decision is made, it would go back to the delegate assembly. Yes, Olga? Yeah, the delegate assembly, to my knowledge, did turn this down a while ago. That's correct. Oh, that's correct. Well, we know that. That's why, we're, that's why we're sticking our heels in the mud. It's frightening to me that they keep pushing this thing, and my fear is that you go one day is going to say, yes, we'll, we'll, well go along with it. They're going to advise the delegates to approve oh, oh, this. The delegates let, me, let me stop you there. It's not us. The technology in the industry right now is to go with all wireless equipment. Like right now, your television is hooked up to a TiVo box. It's hooked up. The new equipment that's in the industry right now is all wireless. Yes. You can't do that unless you have internet into your apartment. So what they're looking is basically to get rid of everything that's old and bring in the new. It is not only BreezeLine, it's Comcast, it's AT&T. Oh. The, and they're pushing the issue for that reason. Yes, Bob? The only issue that, that I think that would have is if someone has an older TV that, that does not have the capability to do internet, if, if that's the case, then they're going to wind up having to buy a new TV, which is going to be even more expensive. Also, as far as internet goes, I personally get 300 megabytes uh, Pay for that. And I and I pay for that. I'm paying eighty something dollars total with with my you know my whole bill. Um, I I'm, I personally am very dissatisfied with it, and I'm 
I'm pretty much ready to go to a different vendor. So just to let you know. Uh, did I answer your question? Just, just so that you're aware of it. You're answering my question, but I'm concerned because my building has internet. We pay eight dollars each approximately. Okay? Right. Eight dollars for internet. That's what we're paying because my whole building is by fiber comcast. Right. So that's gonna cost us more money. Plus I have a contract. And if they do this, when I still have that contract, we're gonna be paying double. And this is what I'm concerned about. And there are other buildings that have the same problem, not only mine. All right, I, but no, trust me when I tell you, the officers, David, has made it known to Leo, to CSI, and to Breezeline that we, at this time, we have no interest okay. in this total package. And like Donald said, when they come back with a package that we might consider, it would go in front of the delegates. Okay. We would not make that decision on our own. Yes, Question. if, hold on, hold on. Yes, Mary. Question, does wireless mean I won't have that cable coming into my house? Does wireless mean I won't have that cable? No, that cable's still going to come to your house. They're going to hook it up to a box. What? But from that point on, it'll be like working your laptop remotely. Right. You won't have a TiVo box. You won't have DTA boxes. It'll all be done remotely. I won't have a modem box. The modem would be what the modem. The modem would be what you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Jerry. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can bring something else up. I don't know if this falls on the new business, but sure. um, I attended a meeting last week with a group of uh, people who are possibly thinking about start, starting a Hachala service. And I'll explain that what that is momentarily. If you're from New York or Donald's from the five towns, you know what I'm a subscriber. I believe you know what Hachala is. I'm a subscriber. Okay. Hatsala is a, a volunteer ambulance service. Hatsala means rescue. Um, and um, they are planning to have this volunteer ambulance service start here in Palm Beach and in the village as of uh, in the fall. Okay? Um, the reasoning behind it is that they, they said that a lot of the elderly people who have come here from Brooklyn and Staten Island. They're very leery about going with 911. So they give all kinds of excuses. I'm going to go uh, to my doctor in New York. I'm going to fly out tomorrow. In the meantime, I had two cases already where the person almost flatlined because he refused to go to the emergency room. So they, this Hatsama organization, or I'll call volunteer ambulance services, is already fun functioning in Boca and in parts down south. Uh, they are campaigning to get an ambulance and a dispatch service over at the synagogue here, and they will service people. Now, I, I ask the question, are you just going to service Jewish people, or are you going to service everybody? Uh -huh. um, to which I was told in New York, they can't discriminate. They'll lose their license. So my feeling is that if this happens here in the village, they'll be able, you know, they're going to have to service whoever calls them. Um, you know, I, I don't know how the effect or the I I issues that are going to be with UCO. I really, you know, but but I'm just going to let you. Know, I'm letting you know that this is they are planning to start this service um, right after the high holidays, high holidays in the fall. Well, don't they need our approval? Well, well, well okay. All right. Look, um, I have a little bit of of uh, background on this. Um, I lived in two areas that were hot solo serviced areas. Forest Hills and Long Beach, and I was a subscriber in both places. Um, they're, they're um, how do I say it? They're, they're authorization to operate comes from the county, and if they were to establish here in, in Century Village or across the street, they would be treated just like the Red Wagon or AMR. They, 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 they'd be the same. Um, from, my, from my point of view, the establishment of a Zolo is a 100% net gain for the village. The service is um, um, beyond good. Um, I lived in an apartment building where they had their rig parked across the street from my house. It was, it, I'd be an idiot not to be a subscriber, and at one point my wife was ser served by them. Um, and well, um, as soon as we know what's going on, I'm sure it'll be a point of contact. 
um, the, that point of contact will very likely uh, talk to our security committee, and we'll work we'll work that out. Um, so uh, this is the first time. Uh, well, I did hear some inklings about it. So Jerry, whatever you got, whoever you got, send them my way. I absolutely. Just just a very quick uh, little history note here. The whole reason why this started is that in, uh, back in 1980, uh, unfortunately, uh, somebody had a heart attack in a synagogue, and it took the uh, 911 45 minutes to get there, and obviously this person passed away. So a group of um, paramedics formed uh, formed this organization and said, "We this cannot be anymore. We we're, we're going to train. We're going to have people go out on calls 24 hours a day." Uh, and as Donald said, it, it's, it's a fantastic um, service, and if it happens here, I'm just letting you guys know if there's anything that um, needs to be done. Uh, just want to give you a heads up. Well, I'm, I'm going to let you know that uh, four years ago, when a few or five, those of us that were here, remember that AMR was on premise? Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Well, four years ago, Palm Beach County made the 911 call mandatory can't call AMR. So they're going to have to go, as far as my understanding, Palm, Palm Beach County said 911 is going, who's going to get every single call. And they will determine if it's an emergency, they go with the red truck. If it's not an emergency, you can call AMR. Now, that's something they're going to have to look into and see if, this is because the county, it's money for them. They're, you know, and, and I, this has been explained to me over the last four years with people, why can't I call AMR? I have a sticker. They're not allowed to take 911 phone calls. They got to go through the red truck. I understand. This is going on in Boca. <clears throat> they got permission to do it in Boca, so obviously the same permission. I'm just, but so, I, I don't I, know. I'm just I'm, letting you know. I'm going to try to send the guy who came and talked to us to speak to Donald. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jackie? This might be a premature question. You're saying that it will be available to everybody. So then. I assume this will be publicized in the paper so everybody would know. Well, well, once we're, we have any service that we have that's available, we, we would let everybody know. Bob. Thank you. All right, I'm going back back to, to actually I'm going to speak on, on both these things. Um, as far as the, the cables and stuff, if, if we did go with that, that means every snowbird would have to pay for it throughout the year, right? which is kind of unfair to them. So, so that's, that's one reason why we would vote no. All right. Now, as far as the uh, this ambulance service you're discussing, what is going to be the expense of it? Is it going to be cheaper than going with AMR, or, or is it something that's going to be big enough where AMR can be eliminated uh, this is an initial discussion so I could not tell you but but like I, I'll get the guy who spoke with us to speak with Donald and it, it's to me it sounds like it's a good deal all right if if they got enough ambulances to completely eliminate AMR from you I doubt they'll have enough AMR. I think that they're looking maybe at one or two ambulances at the most that's, again I could be wrong but that's my feeling Peter, you had your hand up. Is this going to be part of the 911 system? And is it going we to have be no idea. ALS and know. ELS? We have no idea. Usually, I can tell you, in New York, it's not part of the 911 system. They have their own number and their own dispatcher. Mm -hmm. So you get a number to call, it goes to their, their dispatch office, and they dispatch the ambulance from wherever. They gave me a sticker, I put it on the yeah. phone, on the wall. Right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I've got two questions. Speak up to one. Oh, yeah, the mic. Where's the mic? Yeah, I'll bring it. Yeah, come on. Should I stand, too? No, you don't have to. If you want. Okay, uh, back to uh, the uh, the telephone. I have a condo up in Altima Spring, and we are, we have to use Spectrum. And because we use Spectrum, that we don't have to have cable. All you have to have is all you have to have is internet. And most of the most of the the new TV have the thing called Roku and built in them. Right. It's almost like a fire stick. Yeah. You can get everything, and I only pay like forty forty two dollars a month for that service. Mm -hmm. And they 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 
do uh, people over 65, you know, they get a discount and all that. And it works good. It's very good. TVs are very cheap now. It's not like you pay a lot of money for a television. Would, but, you, like, would you like to explain to her the difference, uh, Joanne? What's the difference, Joanne? I agree with you that, you know, the TVs are less expensive. However, our population is probably not a streaming friendly population, uh, a wireless population. In other words, what we've been used to all these years is, is going to go out the window as far as, you know, what you're subscribing to. So it would radically change the way we watch cable TV. And that's fine. I'm not opposed to it. Obviously, you're not opposed to it. But I think there's a lot of other people that would probably be uncomfortable with learning how to go out on the internet to get their entertainment. Um, that's the difference, is you go to the internet, you don't go to your cable provider. They're just providing you a pipe into the internet. So it, it, there is a radical difference. Well, yeah, I, you, you're right, Joanne, you're right, but the world is changing. I, but the, let me I get that. And, and oh, progress. Ladies, let, let me explain to you. Okay. We have a call-in system that you, you call the gates, okay? That system currently is working basically what you're saying. And that system goes down quite rapidly. So if you have no internet, you can't call emergency in, you can't call a doctor in, you can't call a medicine, you can't call a friend in. We're trying to update that system the old-fashioned way to make sure that it's hardwired so that that system is basically bulletproof. And that's part of the system. I know, but as as the world changed, I, I mean, I'm saying this because I used to be an engineer for Pratt Whitney. I, I know how things change, mm -hmm. and I know how I, I worked up there for 40 years. And if we we have to change, and I we have to adapt. It's not easy because I have to call my granddaughter most time when I need <laughs> something done. Yeah. But things gonna stop working. That just that's just where it is. For, it's going to stop working, and things can be adapted to. And we have to, as seniors, we have to learn to adapt. Most things now is just push a button. If it don't work, unplug it, plug it back in, and it'll, it'll start up again. Well, all right. What was your other question? I said you had two things. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> push the button. <laughs> Go up into the cloud and pull it down. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I was going to ask about his 9-11 um, uh, thing. Uh, down at, uh, you know what Pratt Whitney is, right? Yes. They have their own 9-11 and their own ambulance service. Only because it's so far out. Yeah, volunteer ambulance. Yes. And everything, back, but Palm Beach County, the way it's locked down, you think they're going to allow that? Yeah, they already have Flora, and um, again, from my experience in New York, my there is there are certain parts of Queens that still have volunteer ambulance calls. Hamilton Beach, Broad Channel, they work directly with the fire department. In fact, most of the volunteers are firemen, you know, professional firemen. So this this is not unheard of. No, I'm not saying it's not now, unheard of. It's the way the county is structured. Yeah, now they they've already they, they have a plan for this. I'll I'll find out. Bob, you wanted to say something? Yeah, yeah, you're, oh, you're done. Okay. Uh, any other new business? Yes, Bobby? I just want to remind everybody that your social events committee is working very, very hard planning a terrific party on March 12th. In the next couple of weeks, every volunteer will get a letter on the internet giving the specifics about the party and how to RSVP. I want to stress that anybody whose name is not on the RSVP list will not be served lunch. The cost of food has gone sky high and we're trying to limit people coming and going. So when you get your letter, RSVP, 
or you don't get into the party room. Bob? Um, I'm just noticed, I just looked it up on my calendar. Speed my please, Bob. I just looked it up on my calendar. That's also the day that daylight savings comes in. So if they tell you one o'clock, make sure you have your clock set forward. Otherwise, you're going to be there an hour early. Straight forward. Okay. EST. I have a question. Yes. Or not a question. Yeah. I do. Um, the, two, the two entrances and exits to the that you put in over at the synagogue over there onto Haverhill. Yeah. The one at the light, is that for only outcoming, outgoing traffic? Outgoing. Or the other one that's a little up more towards Northmore. Why do cars come out of there to, to get into the lane to come into here? It's causing a lot of craziness because they just pull out. They don't look, they don't do anything, they pull out to come into here. And they're sideways, and they're this way, and I thought that that light was there for them to exit. Thank you. First of all, uh, have you talked to the wall lately? Because that's what I've tried to do many times, and tell these idiots, because one day there's going to be an accident. Do you think that, it's like I'm talking to the wall over there, and I'm getting a, you know, a response. They put in the, they put in two new traffic signals. They're waiting for the mikvah to officially become open. Then they're gonna have these lights that for people to go straight across, okay. not to use that turn anymore. Okay. But okay. Um, you know, like I said, and you can't talk common sense into people. You really can't. Many times I tell them, you know, going into the synagogue, you're supposed to stay in the left lane. Do you know how many people cut over right before? And I tell them, it takes one accident, guys. But then I just, I just get a lecture. None of my business. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And then traffic is so bad anyway that we're getting cut off. That we're in the lane to turn into Century. But I, I understand. I understand. I, it's a wall. Yeah. I get it. You know? We should all be driving semi trucks <laughs> it's and, not even and wearing dark glasses. Right. And, you know. Okay. Thank you. Any other new business? Good in your order. Uh, again, uh, this may, may probably more for Donald, but um, okay. Uh, I know my building has gone through phase one of the new, you know, of the new uh, statute, the SB 40, I think it is, or SB 14. We've had our engineer come down. He gave us a you know clean bill of health. Hold on, Jerry. Please, I want to hear what he's saying. No, Jackie. But, and, but I know there's a phase two, and is there any information about this phase two so that, you know, I, I like to be ahead of the cake, basically. Me too, and I don't have that information yet. Um, again, uh, Attorney Friedman has scheduled another class specifically for this, and I think that's in March, and it's all about SB4D, which is the new requirements for buildings over three stories and up, three stories and up. Um, I'm sure by then, There'll be more information on the phase two, but this is Florida. Florida legislature is famous for uh, unclear uh, legislation. So the, the, the lawyers don't know. How are we going to know? But we are, we are sure about the phase one and the reserve study. So that's something we need to, we need to get busy. Because I believe buildings have to have mandatory reserves for this now. Which, right, which will add on possibly to their building maintenance. I mean, I. Right, and, and my, my original, just to go how, how the understandings of these things is evolving, my original um, information was that after the reserve study, the buildings would be required to fund the reserves in their entirety, um, back, like back in New York. And that's not the case, as it turns out. Um, you, need to, you need to show that you're funding at a level that would replenish the, uh, the element. When, by the time it's useful, life is up. Um, so all that really means is that you can't have a membership uh, vote to waive or reduce those statutory reserves anymore. And who, who gets to decide the life of an element, a roof, a, a staircase? It's an engineer, not, not a president who's, you know, the, you know you're going to be a mailman. You have to have dedicated reserves. You can't commingle everything. You can't commingle anymore. There's no more pooled reserves. You, you've got to show you, you, you're on track to pay for the roof 
when the roof is ready to be re to be replaced. Donald, so there'll be more of this. Are you talking about for all buildings or just no. three stories and more? Three stories and up so far. Okay. Um, most of us are in two-story buildings. Don't think that there's not more regulation or insurance requirements coming down the pipe. I, I, I'm certain of it. Um, for those of you that do not know, on February the 22nd, which is a Wednesday, at, there is the HOA Condo Expo that's held downtown at the convention center. It's free. Uh, you can go online and sign up for it. The certification class is the first class from 8.30 to 10.30. And then in the afternoon, there's the legal update class, uh, which I believe goes from 2.30 to 4.30. If you have nothing else to do, go there. And besides, there's other things besides the vendors. And you might get some of these questions answered by the people that are giving these classes. Uh, good in the order? Yeah, go ahead, Jerry. I just turned it off. Okay. Uh, I just want you to read a letter that I got that I asked Mark Speaking about this, and he said, if an association fails to complete a structural integrity reserve study pursuant to this paragraph, such failure is a breach of the officers and directors' fiduciary relationship to the unit owners under 718. Okay. If the Office of the Director of Association willfully and knowingly fall to have, to have a milestone inspection performed pursuant to whatever, such a failure is a breach of the officer's and director's fiduciary uh, uh, relationship, and the officers and, uh, uh, and, uh, and directors of the building are personally liable. Okay. That'll get us a lot of new officers in the yeah. building. <laughs> Just take it at. Uh, all right. Um, since we have nothing for the good of the order, I'll entertain. Yes, ma'am. Just one more thing. Sure. Sit next to you. Let's talk. Yeah, I did do that. Oh, I just want to thank uh, Cam, Cam, and Donald Foster. We invited them to our uh, group. Uh, we have the AACC, the African American Culture Club. We uh, people don't know what you call. And uh, WPR, what's the difference? Right. So the, we invited John Foster to come and speak at our group. And I was just want to thank him. He brought out a lot of things that people live up here and been living up here don't know. So it was a it was a great meeting. He did an excellent job. And I just want to personal thank him. And he don't walk out of the room. We should and, keep him in the dark. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whatever, but he did an excellent job. People got a lot of information, and, he, and I just want to thank you for that. We'll tell them. Okay. Please tell I, them. Just, I just wish more uh, buildings and, and associations would do what you did. Yeah. But just, just so that you're aware, all that information is available at the UGO office. That's what the vice presidents are there for five days a week. We each have a quadrant, and we try to... If there's someone missing, we will cover them, but we will explain how to run your building, what you need to do. We talk to new unit owners every day, but even new officers. You, I Listen, we're, you have no idea how many people come for a barcode that live in the village for 10 years, and, and we ask them, you need your Century Village ID and your registration, and they say, what is that? Exactly. Think about that. Okay. We have a lot of those. All right. Anything else? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Made by Bobby. Seconded by? Seconded by Maureen. All in favor? Aye. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. I lose weight? Oh, thank you. Tell me again. Tell me again. I did that right. I wonder what you're using. I've been going to exercise, walking, because my blood pressure is out of control. So, my doctor said, you need more medicine or try to do something. Okay. No.